about 20 years of uh, teaching history has left me with a mind which is often reliving events from the past or thinking about things that have happened in the past. This year I've noticed that I've started to collect snippets and snatches and stories of things that people have said and events that have happened, all related to the past. I wonder about these things. I wonder how they can help us to understand what's happening today and how they can help us to improve the future. But I'm suspicious. I'm like a detective. I wonder about these stories that happened at a time when I wasn't there. I wonder about the truth of some of these stories. Because history is not innocent. The storyteller is often not going to tell the whole truth, nothing but the truth. The storyteller is the victor, the powerful, the strong, the educated, the survivor, the loudest voice. Sometimes the storyteller wasn't there. Sometimes the storyteller was persuaded to tell the story by someone else. Today I'm going to share some of these fragments that I've collected this year with you. Things that I've heard, things that have been shared, in an effort to make sense of what's happened and what is happening. These are stories of lost voices or quiet voices, stories that maybe in the past were not heard. The first one I got from my mum. She said, I read a good book. It was by Marza Mengista, and so I searched for her voice. Maybe some of you know this book. Marza Mengista, I found Marza Mengista's voice in an interview, and she shared how her Ethiopian family that had fought in the 1935 Italian-Ethiopian War couldn't be fully told. The story of her family and what happened to them is in the hands of the Europeans, is in the hands of the archives which are held in Europe. Ethiopians from that war have to travel to Europe in order to find out their story. They don't get to own their story. And Marza Mengista said, the archives are not innocent. The archivists are powerful. The archivists get to control the story. They decide what's kept and what's discarded, whose family's stories are told and whose are removed from history. So she wrote a novel, The Shadow King, as a way to kind of redress that balance and to get her family's story out there. In particular, she wanted to share the story of some of the women warriors that fought in that war who were successful and whose stories have largely been erased from the archives. Hers is an example of where, in a year of global turmoil, of upheaval, where the natural world has reasserted itself in the shape of a virus, her assumptions for so, held for so long have been upended. Environmental degradation has slowed. Global travel reduced to a fraction of its size. And in the midst of all of this, quiet voices are beginning to emerge. Let's take a snippet from those stories of Breonna Taylor and George Floyd, widely reported across the mainstream media. Stories that in the past might not have been so familiar to us all. These stories which resulted in the Black Lives Matter protests. And I listened as uh, an American journalist, Lila Raptopoulos, shared, protests are so powerful, only to be rebuffed by a local Asian artist who said, protests are not powerful. Protests can be ignored. Power lies in the hands of the, of the lawmakers. 
Protests in and of themselves have no power. So, is he right? One year on from these events, is anybody still listening? I like to think that just as with Mengista's novel, quiet power will come from those who've been wronged. And that with movements born out of protest, the narrative is already shifting. Because the past is a weave of threads. Patterns emerge and disappear. They intersect and they overlay. Is there really any such thing as African history or European history? What about those that lie in the middle? Either through birth or career or circumstance. Lives are connected and we are all connected. And that is why the cancel culture that's emerged this year, this idea of banishing comments perceived to be offensive in books or novels or wherever, is too blunt an instrument to redress the balance. Because the stories are complicated. I watched in June, this is my next snippet here, what I was watching in June as the statue of Edward Colston Slave trader turned philanthropist was torn down and thrown into the harbour in England. An opportunity to reflect on the words of Obama who said, the world is messy. There are ambiguities. I recall the stories of women leaders from the past, people like Cleopatra, I just use her as an example. Women who have risen up to lead countries or even empires, sometimes from very humble origins, even as sex workers. Women whose stories and achievements, accomplishments are often dismissed by the men who write the history as schemers or seducers. who deliberately try to obscure what is recorded and their intelligence and skills are often overlooked. On the other hand, we're apt to have a fascination for ruthless dictators who we see as strong and charismatic. But we fail to hear how they love art or history or poetry, music. Often how are they are loving fathers, husbands and sons. People are multi-layered, and cancelling or forgetting or refusing to acknowledge aspects of the past that are uncomfortable or don't fit the narrative of the day is not the answer. After all, we already established that history is guilty, but is this the word, the way to put it right? Do we simply cancel the history that's uncomfortable, or do we attempt to cross the divide? My final snippet comes from very recently. Emerging from the shadows are the voices of girls. This recently created website, Everyone's Invited, where girls are invited, or girls, largely girls, not always girls, are invited to share their stories of abuse, suffered often when they were in education. A modern day archive where the archivists have said everyone is invited. Perhaps this is a way for us to call out past wrongs and to set the record straight and to challenge us all to do better. I was inspired by the voice of a young black woman in January this year. Amanda Gorman said, whilst we have our eyes on the future, History has its eyes on us. We have the power to author a new chapter. And I wove her words into my message to you, which is, tell your story, let the truth be heard. Whoever you are, raise your voice and be a part of the choir. Thank you.
from historian Dan Snow, another great uh, speaker, spoke about how we are living in a time of extraordinary transformation. How young women like Greta Thunberg have challenged the world order and forced us all to raise our gaze. So, get into the digital archive. Harness the power of the internet, the novel or the protest. Call out things that are wrong. Don't try to cancel out the stories that are difficult to tell. And we can make the future better. And we can make it listen. After all, the story has not yet ended. <laughs>